Hey everyone, Peter here. Welcome back to my channel, and thanks so much for tuning in. I hope you're all safe and well, especially during these challenging times. It's been a minute since my last posing video, and I just want to express my utmost gratitude for all the wonderful support I've received from around the world. It's always been my goal to share fun pose ideas, tips, and tricks with the hopes of inspiring fellow collectors to expand their posing creativity, and I'm so fortunate and grateful for everyone's positive feedback, so thank you. Now today, we'll be showcasing 15 different poses for one of the most influential characters in recent Star Wars history who's also become somewhat of a legend in the making, and that's Din Djarin, aka The Mandalorian by Hot Toys. Now, it's worth mentioning that this video will focus on the original version of Mando since my Beskar Deluxe figure hasn't arrived yet, so you'll find the majority of these poses were heavily inspired by chapters 1 and 2 of the series. Also, although the stock figure can achieve some aggressive poses, I altered mine by removing most of the padding underneath in order to make posing him a lot easier and overall more enjoyable. Now, I will be doing the same modifications to my Beskar figure when it arrives, so let me know in the comments if you'd like a tutorial video or a livestream hangout of that process. And so, to kick things off, here we have the iconic walking pose from the official D23 reveal poster of 2019. It's kind of hard to believe that not too long ago, we lived in a world without Mando, Baby Yoda mania, nor everything else that the show has given us. I mean, one of the many great things about this show is how it honors its western and samurai influences of a lone wolf roaming the lands. And so for this pose, I wanted to convey a sense of purpose and movement by having him peer down at the tracking fob, blaster in hand, as he hones in on his bounty with a windswept cape. Now, for those who might be new to the hobby or haven't seen my posing tutorials, I've mentioned that a walking pose can be somewhat of a balancing act, but it's fairly easy if the figure has pretty strong ankle joints. Having a split cut boot design helps tremendously as well, but it's not required. And when it comes to his cape, there wasn't any sewing or tape involved. I just folded a long black twist tie in half to give it a more rigid structure and hooked it onto his belt or shoulder harness depending on the pose. And here we have our first action pose, which kind of uses an accessory that's not included with the figure, and it's when Mando fires a whipcord from his gauntlet to restrain a fleeing target. Now, the Beskar version does include both the whipcord and flamethrower accessories for this type of action pose, but for the time being, I just borrowed the long grappling hook from my Justice League Batman figure. I did see someone else use one of Hawkeye's arrows, which was pretty dope, so it's definitely fun when fellow collectors come up with creative and resourceful ways of achieving a pose. Next up, we have another memorable moment from the reveal trailer, and it's when Mando blasts the control panel of a dilating door which ends up severing a hostile corn in half. Pretty dark stuff for Disney, but that bar fight really helped establish both a mature tone and Mando's prowess all within the first three minutes of the show. Now, when it comes to the gunslinger pose, you'll want to be sure to dip his right shoulder down pretty aggressively while leaning him back quite a bit and his knees spread apart for better balance. And, as a bonus, if you happen to own a Kylo Ren figure, you can plug one of his lightsaber cross-hilt blades into the barrel of Mando's blaster for some extra flair. I just used a bit of earthquake putty to hold it in place, but I think double-sided tape might work as well. And here we have Mando performing a dual-wielding quick draw upon being startled during his meetup with the client. Now, although I don't own any Remnant or Empire Stormtroopers at the moment, I figured those who do might enjoy this pose a bit more if you've got the space to surround him with a few troopers. But for me, one of the best things from this scene, aside from Werner Herzog's captivating performance, is when a Remnant trooper confidently says they outnumber him 4-1, to one, and Mando simply replies, I like those odds. Damn dude, we're barely 15 minutes into the show and my guy's dropping lines like that? Certified badass. Alright, now heads up, Mando will be wearing his Beskar pauldron for the remainder of this video since the following poses occur after it was crafted by the armorer back on Navarro. And so here we have Mando in a semi-casual pose, blaster rifle in hand, as he scans the terrain upon landing on Arvala 7. Now, although this one's not a dynamic pose, it's probably one of my favorites for this figure mostly because of its natural subtlety. I'll admit that I tend to gush in all my videos, but I just can't help it. Hot Toys really brought their A-game with this figure. I mean, sure, fellow collectors might not be fooled, but outsiders with an untrained eye could easily mistake this figure for a real person, and that's a testament to the unrivaled quality that Hot Toys sometimes delivers in their final product. Keyword, sometimes. 
Now this next pose is pretty much a direct continuation of our last one, and it's when Mando aims his sniper rifle to get a closer look at some blurgs before nearly being eaten by one. Thankfully the Ugnaught Queel was there to save his ass, otherwise this show would have been over in 25 minutes. Side note, we definitely need a Queel figure in 1 6th scale. Whether or not it's licensed, I really hope it happens. Now when it comes to his cape, as mentioned previously, I just connected a black twist tie to his shoulder harness and flared it out a bit to emphasize a sense of wind direction. And for the pose itself, I found it a bit challenging to raise his arm up high with all the stock padding underneath since it felt like the gray fabric around his shoulder was going to rip. And so poses like this, along with the whipcord launching one, and a few others were the main reasons I removed most of the padding except for around the gauntlets and the shin guards. Again, he is posable with the padded undersuit, but personally I felt it was just getting in the way. Also, I mentioned this on social media, but huge shout out to fellow collector Andrew Whale for sharing this tip upon its initial release. Alright, and here we have one of the most iconic scenes from the entire show, and it's the huge reveal at the end of chapter 1 when we discover that the 50 year old asset turns out to be a youngling that shares a striking resemblance to Master Yoda. Now many others in the community have kindly shared the details about this accessory already, but to help spread the word, the child figure here is just a Hallmark keepsake ornament that you can order online or pick up in store. It is a bit lighter both in detail and paint application compared to the Hot Toys version, but for 20 US dollars it's a very affordable alternative, especially for those who are only getting the original version of Mando and not the Beskar Deluxe set. Now moving along to the beginning of Chapter 2, here we have Mando using his Phase Pulse Blaster to fend off an ambush. And although this scene was kinda brief, I still really enjoyed it because we got to see how Mano can handle himself in close quarter combat. His sidearm was knocked away, but that didn't stop him from making quick work of the Trandoshan bounty hunters. And similar to the bar fight at the beginning of chapter 1, we're shown on full display why Mandalorians are among the most skilled warriors in the galaxy. Now I'm really glad that Hot Toys not only included the electric shock accessory, but they also updated the paint application. The other shock accessories that came with Riot Trooper, Thor, and Flash are a bit dated and kinda dull looking, so this was a very welcome inclusion. Now these next two poses kinda go hand in hand, and it's that funny scene where Mando watches from afar as a group of Jawas strip the Razor Crest for parts. Now I'll be honest, during my first viewing, I just thought he was watching them tear his ship apart while holding the rifle up. But after multiple viewings, I realized that he actually removes the scope from his rifle first before disintegrating them one by one. So it's kind of nice that Hot Toys engineered this accessory to be removable for more posing options. And similarly with our reload pose, another somewhat hidden gem about this figure is that each and every ammo cartridge around his entire body is removable. They're nice and snug when he's brand new and straight out of the box, but they do tend to loosen up after messing around with him for a bit which can either be seen as a good thing or a bad thing depending on your preference. Personally, I did have to realign the cartridges every now and then in order to make them appear a little more even, but I figured it's a small price to pay for the ability to swap out individual cartridges. Now these next two poses also pair together since they're from the same scene, and it's when Mando faces off with the Mudhorn but soon realizes that he's losing the battle. Now just like some of his other weapons, unfortunately this version of Mando does not come with his vibro knife either, so I just borrowed one from the endgame Hawkeye for the time being. Technically any other knife would suffice like from Deadpool or Bucky, but if I'm being honest with myself I probably won't be revisiting this pose, I just thought it'd be fun to include. But as the scene comes to a climax, we have Mando looking up in awe as he struggles to comprehend what's happening right before his very eyes. Having just been on his knees, mere seconds away from certain death, he now stands in confusion as he bears witness to something that he can't explain, and as we pan over his shoulder, we see that it's the child who saves Mando by wielding the power of the Force. Now although the Hallmark ornament is lacking in detail, one thing I do like about it over the Hot Toys version is how Grogu's hand is raised. It actually helped inspire this pose since it provides more context through his use of the Force. Now to pull off the hovering pram effect, I just taped an L bracket to the back of my cabinet and simply placed the ornament towards the edge. No drilling or permanent alterations are needed. The tape did kind of peel off at first, but that's because I only used three small strips as a test run. Since it worked well enough for the pose, it can easily be reinforced by adding a few more longer strips around the tension point. Now these next two poses are a bit more casual and overall easier for newer collectors to try. And so here we have our bounty hunter turned hero ready to draw his sidearm as the lone wolf protects his foundling cub. 
And once again, for the hovering pram, I use the L bracket, which can actually be seen here if you look closely at the bottom. Sure, it's a bit noticeable from certain angles, but I figured it's just one more posing option for fellow collectors to try. As I like to say, do whatever works best for you. Alright, and for our final pose, I wanted to incorporate as many of the included accessories as I could. Normally, I'm not a fan of using display bases, except when needed for dynamic aerial poses. But, since Hot Toys put in the extra effort to give us a mini diorama with a bloody Stormtrooper helmet, two spears, and a sandy floor, I figured it'd be a bit of a disservice to not showcase them whatsoever. And so, to cap things off, here we have our rugged space cowboy casually hanging out like some lonesome gunslinger making his way through a lawless galaxy. But, there you have it. 15 different pose ideas for The Mandalorian by Hot Toys. Now, I really hope you enjoyed this video. Although it's been a while, I still have a lot of fun making this type of content for fellow collectors to learn from and enjoy. If you did, feel free to show your support with a thumbs up and let me know in the comments which pose you liked the most. I'll have them posted on Instagram over at posingwithpeter16. And lastly, if you're unaware, I highly recommend checking out the Mandalorian behind the scenes docuseries called Disney Gallery. I mentioned earlier how it's such a great time to be a Star Wars fan, and we really gotta hand it to the visionaries John Favreau, Dave Filoni, and their entire creative team for giving us something truly special with The Mandalorian. Not only did this show manage to win over the hearts of an already divided fanbase, but it also brought in an entirely new wave of audiences, many of whom might not have embraced Star Wars beforehand, and I think that's a beautiful thing. The Mandalorian has undoubtedly become a pop culture sensation, and with a year as painfully grim as 2020 has been, I gotta say that this show, and season 2 in particular, was a much needed shining light at the end of a very dark tunnel. In any case, that's all I got for now. Thanks so much for watching. As always, please stay safe, take care, and we'll see you in the next video.